Ever walked onto an airplane and taken a sneak peek of the cockpit? Yeah, they don't usually let passengers check it out, but we've also got the internet, where we can see a bunch of videos and pictures of the insanely intricate room full of screens, switches, buttons, dials, and circuit breakers. Honestly, it can be pretty intimidating. And we're curious, do pilots actually use all the buttons and switches in the cockpit? First off, can you even differentiate between the controls? Honestly, we can't, but obviously a trained pilot can. Like it would be pretty impossible to actually fly a plane and land without crashing it and risking hundreds of lives if they didn't know all about the controls. Having said that, we gotta admit, it's definitely intimidating because there's just so much to remember. How do they even do it? Did you know that a lot of the buttons and switches you see in aircraft cockpits are actually duplicated for both pilots? That way, they can just access the controls they need from their seat and not uncomfortably lean over to one edge of the plane. In fact, you'll see a few buttons and switches right in the middle, and they control aircraft systems such as fire, climate, lights, and other equipment, which isn't really needed in primary flight control. Now, if you ask pilots, they're going to tell you that even after all the basic training they get, the first time they sit in the cockpit of a modern airplane is always overwhelming. Like, pretty much the feeling of, I have no idea what the heck all this stuff does. But with enough training and practice, it becomes more familiar than you'd think. And it's not really as confusing as you'd think it is, because obviously there's some sort of labeling or grouping. Whatever helps the pilots know exactly what each switch is for. Usually they're logically grouped and pretty clearly labeled. Having said that, what are the kind of controls you're going to see in there? Well, some of the more common things you'll find are definitely radios and a bunch of different switches. And we could use a couple of buzzwords like airspeed indicator, artificial horizon, and stuff, and confuse you even more. But we're going to move on with some basic stuff like radio navigation, engine gauges, and the yoke, which is actually the weird steering wheel you see in the cockpit. You're going to see the throttles, which are basically thrust levers, and some primary flight instruments on a screen in front of each pilot. Now that includes radios all together in the console, some basic engine instruments on the malfunction display in the middle, and a couple of more things such as those with flight management system computers above throttles, and of course, circuit breakers and system controls on top. Also, some of them are going to be labeled clearly enough for a regular person to understand too, like some pretty intuitive buttons on the overhead panel include seatbelt lights, airline logo, and other stuff. Moving on, how do pilots remember everything? Now one thing that's important to note is that pilots are going to be trained on this stuff until it's muscle memory. Like, after hours and hours and literally hours of training on what does what, you're going to know exactly what you need, where it is, and when and how to use it. You're not going to see Dexter Sister Dee Dee in the cockpit, looking at random switches and thinking, ooh, what does this button do? Instead, you've got trained professional pilots who've spent years studying, training, and gaining experience to be able to fly you from one place to the next, high up in the air. After spending a big chunk of their time learning about flying a plane, at one point, muscle memory is pretty much going to take over from there. And well, it's like something happens and your hand will just go to the right switch, control, or whatever you need. Some forms of training involve the blindfolding cockpit check, which pilots are required to do right before their first solo flight. So basically what happens is that you gotta sit in the front seat blindfolded. That's right, blindfolded. From then on, they'll call out different switches, knobs, controls, and instruments, and you gotta reach out and touch each one without being able to take a sneak peek. So not only do you need to know what each of them does, but you also gotta know exactly where they are even if you're blindfolded. So, of course, they're not going to let a pilot sit in the cockpit and fly a plane with hundreds of passengers until they're absolutely ready for it. Plus, it's not just the exact control, but also a specific sequence. Yeah, let us elaborate a bit on that. Now, before we scare you, this part is mostly from an older aircraft that isn't really used for commercial transport anymore, because modern airlines came in and fixed the problem. But here's the catch. Back in the day when 707s, 727s, and even the early 737s ruled the sky, you didn't just need to know what every control was used for. You also need to know the specific order in which they need to be activated because getting the wrong order could be fatal. Now, there were three switches on the 727 flight engineer panel that some pilots had flipped in the wrong sequence, and just one wrong sequence crashed the jet. Like flipping the same three switches in a different order would have been a routine emergency, but one wrong sequence cost the lives of everyone on the plane. And since it's happened more than once, we've learned our lesson pretty well. So thank you, Modern Airlines, for actually fixing this problem, or we don't think most of us would have been comfortable flying in a plane after knowing this bit of info. But what does a pilot's training look like? Well, one of the first few things pilots get, other than a bunch of other files and checklists, is a huge
huge A2 size poster of the cockpit with every switch, indicator, screen, and light bulb that you're going to see in the actual cockpit. And if you're in pilot training, you're going to be attending a bunch of weeks of ground school. Think a lecture room with 22 to 55 year old pilots in the same uniform. Yep, the classic white shirts. And they're all going to be sitting at desks, facing a typical whiteboard, with a senior ground school pilot who's got an instructor rating for the specific aircraft type. And well, he's going to tell you everything you need to know. Talk about every system and its function, the operations methods the airline uses, and typically everything you should know before even dreaming about sitting in the cockpit and flying an actual plane. With that said, similar to any other training program, you're going to sit in the classroom for a couple of days and get a bunch of quizzes on the function of each item in the cockpit and whatever systems drive themes. So that's basically your flight manual or computer-based training knowledge. Now, you've probably seen some kind of computer-based training program in different workplaces. Very basic, nothing too fancy. It's basically an app or website that's usually on your laptop or PC with a collection of a bunch of different paragraphs written out and some audio or visual clips that could help with explaining stuff. And then you'd move on to some multiple choice questionnaires at the end of each section before you go to the next stage. Next up, let's talk about the most thrilling experience, the flight simulator. Now, if you've even heard the slightest bit about pilot training, you know that they get to practice their skills on a flight simulator, which is honestly pretty exciting. The flight simulator cockpit might just be driving a computer program, but you're going to see every single cockpit control as you'd see in an actual cockpit. Same controls, same positions. Like, even the cup holders are the exact same ones from the real aircraft. Yep, even the oxygen masks work. Like, it's the most real it can get. Now, a simulator session can go for hours and hours. With that said, the thrilling experience can soon become a very exhausting ride after hours of training, and you're going to have an instructor sitting right behind you, who's basically just there to watch you very, very closely. Like, they're going to test you for every single thing. It can be pretty overwhelming. Now, that'll include obscure emergencies and systems failures. And when we say systems failures, be sure to expect multiple failures just stack up. You're going to have interrupted flows with ATC requests that's going to come in at inconvenient moments, and a pretty persistent cabin crew dealing with passenger problems, including medical emergencies. You really got to be prepared for everything. Like even the other pilot is going to be briefed to secretly miss things or fly badly on purpose. So when you're flying a simulator for training purposes, you can almost guarantee that by the time you're landing at an arrival airport, you're going to have to deal with a bunch of problems, like take a guess from anywhere between a patient having a heart attack to pressurization problems and an engine on fire, and you gotta manage every single thing. Having said that, pass the tests and check rides and get signed off by an instructor as competent. Start initial operating experience with an experienced senior captain who's gonna give you the opportunity to fly and learn while making sure everyone's safe on board. A month or three of that mentorship, and you'll know the plane inside out. So next time you're on a plane, Know that your pilot is definitely experienced with every situation you can think of, because you're in safe hands. That's a wrap for this video. Would you be able to memorize the hundreds of controls that pilots gotta remember? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.